In this video, what I want to do is talk about businesses, their cost structure, and at the same time talking about the idea of producer surplus and business decisions about whether they should shut down or whether they should continue producing in the short run and maybe whether they should shut down in the long run, which usually we don't call shut down, exit the industry. I'm bringing a little bit of calculus, a little bit more mathematics than what you would have seen in a, an introductory, typical introductory microeconomics class. So this kind of problem you might see, you're given a cost function. So here we have a cubic cost function, C equals 0 0.005 times Q cubed plus 30Q plus 750. Now, when you look at a cost function like this, think back to discussions about variable costs and fixed costs. Variable costs are things that you spend more on when you produce more units, and fixed costs are things like rent or insurance that do not go up as you produce more. When you look at a cost function like this, anything that has a Q in it, as you make Q larger, that's going to make the cost go up. So here, these are the this part of this function would represent the variable costs, and this 750 sitting over here by itself with no Q involved would be your fixed costs, because fixed costs are costs that you have to pay even when you produce zero units. So these would be your fixed costs, 750, and this is a function that increases in Q. It goes up as you produce more. Now this says, suppose we're looking at a competitive firm, and suppose the market price is $54. So a competitive firm is going to make their decisions about how many to produce based on what the market price is. And according to the law of supply, as the price goes up, the quantity supplied will go up. So let's answer some various questions we might be asked about this scenario. Uh, if the market price is 54 Let's look at the variable cost. Well, the variable cost would just be this part of the function that we were just talking about. Sorry, the screen has a tendency to jump around on me when I put my hand on it. Uh, variable cost is going to be 0 0.005Q cubed plus 30Q, and that's all we can say for the moment. Variable costs are going to be different because we don't know how much this business wants to produce yet. Now, what about marginal cost? Well, Marginal to an economist usually means the derivative. Now, since we could view this cost function, we could call it also a total cost function. When you take the derivative of a total function, you get the marginal function. So if we take the derivative of, you could say DTC, the derivative of total cost with respect to Q, that's going to give us the marginal cost function. So what's the derivative of this total cost function going to be? Well, multiply by the exponent. So 3 times 0 0.005 is going to be 0 0.015q. Now subtract 1 from that exponent, q squared, plus the derivative of 30q with respect to q will be 30. And the plus 750, that doesn't have a q in it, so that goes away. So this is a marginal cost function here. Now, the next question asks, what quantity should we produce if the market price was $54? The rule for a perfectly competitive firm, they want to produce until, up until uh, the um, price is greater than or equal to marginal cost. In other words, that's when they want to stop. I should probably phrase this in a little clearer way. They want to keep producing as long as price is less than or equal to marginal cost and stop when price equals marginal cost. So in order to figure this out, uh, what quantity do they want to stop producing at? They want to stop producing when this marginal cost function is equal to 54. And that's when they want to stop. So what we're really being asked here to do is, is to solve this function. At what quantity does this marginal cost function equal 54? All right, well, let's solve this function. Well, the first thing we could do is subtract 30 from both sides, and then we're going to get 
0.015Q squared equals 24, subtracting 30 from both sides there. Now we could divide both sides by that 0.015. And that will cancel it on this side. And we just need to know what's 24 over 0.015. I get 1,600. So Q squared equals 1,600. What is Q? Oh, Q is equal 40, the square root of 1,600. So the quantity, the optimal quantity for a, a, a competitive firm is going to be 40 units. That's where they should stop if they see that the market price is 54 in this case. So given that quantity of 54, the next thing a business is want, going to want to know is what is their total cost of producing 40 units? Well, that's where this total cost function is helpful now. Just plug in 40 units into that cost function. So plug Q equals 40 into that function. Take a minute, pause the video, do that on your calculator, and see what you get. Okay, hopefully now you're back. If you plug it in, you should get that their total cost is 2,100 and, oh, sorry, not, 2,270 is what I got. So total cost $2,270. Now, if that's their total cost for producing 40 units, what's their average total cost? Well, average total cost is simply total cost over quantity. What we want to know is what's the cost per unit? What's the cost per unit when we're producing 40 units? Well, we can take that 2270 and divide that by 40 units, and that tells us that our average cost is $56.75, 2270 over 40. So $56.75. Now, hopefully, if you're paying attention, you ought to see a problem here. We're selling each of these units for $54 a piece, and our average total cost is $56.75 a piece. So what's happening here? Well, we must be losing money because if we're selling each unit for $54 and if on average these units are costing us $56.75 each, we must be losing $2.75 each, right? So we're losing $2.75 each. Now there are two ways to figure out how much our total loss here is going to be. One way, the typical way you might think about doing this, is to take total revenue minus total costs. Well, let's do that. We already know the total cost is $2,270. Our total revenue is going to be $54 times 40 units, $2,160. All right, so we could take our total revenue, $2,160, minus our total cost, $2,270. And we could get that our loss, or you know, we could write it as a negative profit, right? A negative profit here is going to be 2160 minus 2270. We're going to be losing $110. So we're not going to be very happy in this business. Now, what about our producer surplus? Let's think about what is producer surplus? What's the definition of producer surplus? Well, producer surplus is total revenue minus variable costs. Total revenue minus variable costs. Now, we know that our total revenue, we were just talking about this, total revenue is $2,160. Our variable costs, we could get by plugging in our 40 units into this variable cost function. That's one way to get it. Or another way to get this would be to say, wait a minute, our variable costs are our total costs, but without this fixed costs. That's what variable costs are. It's, it's all of our costs, not including 
those fixed costs. So perhaps an easier way in this case to get variable costs would be to say our variable costs are these total costs, 2270, right? So variable costs, 2270, minus the fixed costs, 750. Just giving you a lot of different ways to play with these costs and, and figure things out. So there's no one right way. There's a lot of ways you can think about this. So 2270 minus that $750 tells us that our variable costs are 1520. 1520. So our producer surplus is 2160 total revenue minus variable costs, $1,520. So how much do we have here? Twenty one sixty minus one thousand five hundred twenty dollars, six hundred forty dollars in producer surplus. Now, what does that mean? Well, when you think about producer surplus, you want to think about this is the amount of money that a business has after they pay for their variable costs, right? So you take your your total revenue of twenty one sixty, you pay your variable costs fifteen twenty. And you've got $640 left over. What are those $640 used for? Well, the first thing you have to do with those variable, those uh, sorry, the producer surplus of 640 is to pay those fixed costs. You have to pay the fixed costs of $750 with those, which we can't do with $640. But that $640 you're gonna you're gonna put towards those fixed costs. It's just your fixed costs are bigger than the 640. That's why you're losing money. Because you don't have enough money left out of your total revenue after you pay your variable costs to pay all of your fixed costs. So when you take the 640 minus the 750, that's another way of seeing where this loss comes from, this $110 loss. So how does this illuminate what our decisions should be in the short run and the long run? Well, let's take the short run first. In the short run, you basically have two choices you can make. Your first decision could be to produce 40 units. Produce, use that rule that we were talking about here, produce until your price is, uh, as long as your price is less than or equal, to marginal cost, keep producing until price equals marginal cost, we could produce 40 units. Well, what would happen if we produce 40 units? Well, we're going to lose $110. That's option number one in the short run. Now, the other option we have in the short run, this is always your fallback position, is you could produce zero units today. That's always an option. Now, is that a better option today than producing 40 units and losing $110? Well, let's analyze that. Um, if we choose this shutdown option and produce zero today, our total revenue minus total costs, our total revenue will be nothing. We have nothing to sell. Minus, what would our total cost be of producing zero units? Well, here's our total cost function again. Total costs would be uh, plug zero there, that's zero. Plug in 30 times zero, that's zero. Our total cost would still be 750. So our total cost, total revenue minus total cost would be zero minus 750. We'd lose $750. Which of those would you rather do? Lose $110 or lose $750? I'll go with losing $110 every day. So if you're in a business in this kind of situation, as long as you're making any producer surplus, in this case, $640, as long as you're making any money that can go towards paying down those fixed costs, those costs you have to pay, whether you produce anything or not, you're going to want to produce. The only time you're going to run into a situation where you want to take that shutdown condition. The shutdown condition says we're doing worse if we produce than if we don't produce. 
The only time that would happen is by producing, you have negative producer surplus. You have no money left over to try to pay down those fixed costs. That's the only time you want to do that. In this, ta in this case, we do have producer surplus of 640, which pays most of those fixed costs down, but not all of them. So we're losing 110 in the short run. So today, that's what we have to do. But in the long run, we're not going to want to do this forever. We're not going to want to lose $110 forever. But in the, in the short run, there's nothing we can do. We have to pay those fixed costs. Uh, those fixed costs might represent a contract for rent or loan payments. Also, those fixed costs usually represent things like the money the entrepreneur needs to keep them interested in keeping this business open. What we're saying is we don't have enough money with the producer surplus to pay all those costs. So in the long run, if our profits are negative, so here we're losing $110, we will not sit and eat those costs forever. In the long run, yes, we will exit the industry. And when firms in a competitive market start to exit the industry, that's going to bring the supply curve Right, here's demand, here's supply. In the long run, as firms exit the industry, that's going to decrease the supply. And in the long run, what we'll see is the pr the market price in this industry should go up, and firms are going to keep into exiting the industry until firms are at least breaking even. So we've covered a lot in this short video, but if you go and you review the ideas of consumer and producer surplus, marginal costs, shutdown rules, shutdown decisions, and exiting the industry decisions, all we've done here is take those basic fundamental ideas from Economics 200 and kick them up a notch. So, as always, if you have any questions about this, something you want to see more about, please leave a comment or question in the comments below. Otherwise, good luck in your economic studies, guys.